Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 69 and in this episode I'm gonna share with you 8 new changes in multiple Google Apps so without further ado let's jump in. Let's start with the Files app and it got a complete redesign. You will notice here that the page looks totally different and for reference here is how the old design looks on my Pixel 4 XL. You will notice here that the search bar is showing at the top regardless which page you navigate to you still can access the search while in the older version there is no search bar unless you go to the browse tab now you can search for the items and it disappears once you go to the other two tabs. The second difference is the much smaller internal storage card at the top that looks less distracting in my opinion and it also gives more space to other items to show up on the screen and when you go to the browse tab you will notice the same behavior and instead of having each category in a separate line now they appear in a grid view so you can see all the options with less scrolling and instead of scrolling more in the older version. Also, the nearby share tab got a slight change. It will give you some instructions about the feature instead of only the send and receive buttons. And also the send and receive buttons are now bigger in the newer version. But other than this, they work exactly the same. I couldn't spot any new functionalities. Now we are done with the files app. So let's talk about Google account. Now you can sign into your Google account using the pass keys feature. If you are not familiar with pass keys, it's simply a passwordless sign-in method that will allow you to sign into your Google account without the need to type your password manually or wait for a text message with a code to complete your sign-in process. But instead, all you need to do is to use your biometric authentication like the fingerprint or face ID to complete the sign-in process. And now let me show you how it works. On May 3rd, I received an email from Google to let me know that I can now use the pass keys feature to sign into my Google account. And all I need to do is to activate the skip password when possible option under the security settings of my Google account. You can navigate to this page by tapping on the hyperlink if you received the email, or you can simply go to myaccount.google.com, navigate to security, scroll down until you find skip password when possible, tap on this option. And once you go inside, you will see a toggle here to activate the feature. Once you do that, the phone will automatically store an encrypted key on the device that will allow you to sign into your Google account without typing any password. And every time you sign into your Google account, it will ask you for the fingerprint or face ID authentication. And now let me show you what happens when you try to sign in with the same Google account on a new device. So here I have my iPhone. And when I type the username and then tap on next, it will tell me that this account has the passkey feature enabled. And when I tap on continue, it will show me a QR code. When I open the camera app and scan the QR code, it says here use pass key. And when I tap on use pass key, it will give me the option to allow. And once I allow the connection, then it will ask me for the biometric authentication. And now I'm signed in on my new device. And once you finish the sign-in process, it will ask you if you want to also activate the passkey on this device or not. When you tap on continue, you will be able to sign in on this device from now on. But if you tap on not now, it will only give you a one-time sign-in. And when you try to sign in again to the same account, you have to go through the same process again. Also keep in mind that the passkey feature will only allow you to sign into your Google account on a new device if the new device is within a close proximity. And that's why you might get a screen like this asking you for access to detect the nearby devices. And that will minimize the risk for anyone else to sign into your Google account if they are far away from you. Next, the Google Home app. And if you are running the public beta, now you will see a new bell icon at the top right corner. Tapping on it will take you to a new page called Inbox. From here, you can check all your notifications. And if you want to adjust your settings, you can jump to the home app settings, scroll down until you find notifications. And from here, you have different categories. So you can adjust what kind of notifications you want to see in your home app. And all of them will appear under this new page. The second change is in the now playing screen. Let's say you are casting media from your phone to your smart speakers. When you go to now playing and tap on the device name, you will see a new button here called create group, which will allow you to immediately create a group and start casting to it without the need to go to settings to create this group first, which will make it a little bit easier for you. Next, 
Google Chrome. And I started to see redesigned autofill suggestions when I try to fill in forms in Google Chrome. And this is how it looks now. You will see this new border around the uh, piece of information. And here's another look when I try to sign into my Google account. So I think this is something new that I didn't see before. But please let me know in the comments if you agree with me. Next, Google News app. And I'm going to only show you one change. When I go to the following tab, I see a different page that didn't exist before. And for reference, here I have the previous design on my 6 Pro. And as you see, the two pages look totally different. But when I go to library on the newer version, I'm getting the same exact page on both devices. So it seems like Google added an extra page in the following tab that will give you quick updates about the websites you follow. So instead of taking you to the library right away to manage the things you follow, it will first show you a sneak peek at the new articles released by those websites that you can read first. But if you want to manage your sources, you can do that by going to library. And also if you, add, you want to add more topics or websites to follow, you can tap on this new star button and start searching right away. Next, Google app on iOS. And previously we used to have three pages at the bottom, home, collections, and tabs. But Google decided to remove that collections page. And now to access it, you need to go to tabs first. And at the top, you will see two options, tabs, which will show you the currently open ones. And when you tap on saved, that's when you can see all your collections. It might look slightly different, but it works exactly the same. Also at the top, now you have a new search bar that will allow you to search for tabs, collections, and recents. And finally, the at a glance widget got a minor tweak. Now when you go to the toggles, you will see they are listed differently. And here is how they used to be on my Pixel 4 XL. You will notice here that the earthquake alert is now at the top instead of being at the bottom like before. The flashlight is now at the bottom instead of being in the middle and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to show you. And if you spotted any new features in Google Apps, please let me know in the comments or reach me out on social media so I can include them in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you the next video.